Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 28th of January and we are going to deal with two very important topics which are in news. The India-France relations. This is into picture because the French president was invited as the chief guest for the 75th Republic Day celebrations in India. The French president, despite knowing the fact that he was the second choice after Joe Biden, he still accepted the invitation and graciously came here to India for the celebrations. This clearly highlights the deepening ties between India and France. India and France also celebrated 25 years of its strategic partnership and it was India's first strategic partnership with any European or Western country. Apart from it, India and France also you know, dwell upon civil nuclear programs, scientific cooperation, digital cooperation, tourism. Students are there from India and France. The aim is to you know, invite around 30,000 students from India to France by 2030. All these things were touched upon during this visit. Next is the ICJ ruling on genocide in Israel. South Africa filed a case in the International Court of Justice. But, you know, the ICJ in its ruling has said that, you know, Israel is not committing genocide. It was uh, committing genocide or not. It was not testified. Apart from it, you know, it did not order Israel to do or act, uh, adopt ceasefire. But yes, it prevented Israel from committing any genocidal types of acts in Gaza. That was the main crux of this ruling. So let's get started with the first topic. India-France relations. In December 2023, when India invited French President Emmanuel Macron just one month before the Republic Day, and this why one month before why on such a short notice because the US president Joe Biden was unavailable and you know this pragmatism was at play again when the French president Mr. Emmanuel Macron graciously accepted the invitation despite of the fact that he was knowing that he was the second choice. So that is something which is respectable and commendable. This will be the sixth time that a French leader will be the chief guest at the Republic Day celebrations in India. Now, we need to look into the India-France relations and obviously we share a good relations with this, I would say, European country. That is why probably, you know, on, on such a short notice, the invitation was accepted graciously by the French president. Now, we signed strategic partnership or we upgraded our ties to strategic partnership 25 years ago, we know what strategic partnership is. It is basically when, you know, we are uh, cooperating with any country on multiple dimensions, but the security cooperation is the necessary dimension in that. Security cooperation means we are having defense exercises, defense deals or trade with them and various cooperation agreements like the intelligence sharing agreement and all. These kind of things are there So then, you know, a partnership will be called as a strategic partnership. Now, India and France strategic partnership, the first India signed with any Western country has seen considerable progress in bilateral, regional and international contexts. How? We will see this. The partnership draws strength, trust and consistency from a shared sense of strategic autonomy and sovereignty, a quest for a multipolar world and a natural affinity for democratic values and rule of law. Actually, France does certain kind of activities which you know hints or, or which develops this understanding towards France that France is pursuing strategic autonomy like for example in October November 2000 November 2023 when a resolution was tabled in the UNGA for you know Israel Gaza conflict where it was asked or where, where the leaders were asked or the countries were asked to you know whether whether ceasefire should be there in uh, Gaza region or not by Israel. So many countries voted for it. Most of the countries voted for it, compelling uh, or I would say pointing towards the fact that Israel should go for ceasefire or 
pointing towards the fact that they are in support of the Palestinians. France was one among them, in support of the Palestinians, which, you know, uh, was against this position of USA. So it was like this. India abstained from the voting during that time. So France is or has been pursuing strategic autonomy. The pillars of strategic partnership, defense and security. We have had multiple defense deals with them. Rafale jet being the most popular. Civil nuclear matters. Now France is building the Jaitapur nuclear power plant in Maharashtra, which is going to be the world's largest nuclear power plant. So civil nuclear cooperation is there. Space. France is known for supplying various equipments for our space programs. So it is like this. They constitute principal pillars of this partnership, which now also includes a strong Indo-Pacific component. Indo-Pacific, Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, particularly this region, Southeast Asia and all this is considered as the heart of Indo-Pacific, the place where China's expansionist tendencies are at display. So we are also converging on the Indo-Pacific. A comprehensive roadmap bit for, between India and France was adopted Actually, last year, our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, visited France for the Bastille Day Parade. Bastille Day is kind of the foundation day of France, like we have the Independence Day or Republic Day. You know, they have the Bastille Day Parade, where Narendra Modi was the chief guest. And during that visit of our Prime Minister, you know, the comprehensive roadmap between India and France was classified under three pillars. Partnership for Security and sovereignty, partnership for the planet and partnership for people. So our partnership will focus on these three pillars, partnership for security and sovereignty for the planet, like climate change and all, all these things are there and partnership for the people. The major pillars of cooperation, defense, if I talk about defense, so India and France, they have had a strong, robust defense partnership. Bilateral defense cooperation has been there under and, and it has been under the institutional mechanism of annual defense dialogue. Annual defense dialogue happens between the defense ministers of both these countries annually. High Committee on Defense at the level of secretaries. DRDO office was opened in the embassy of India in France in 2023 so that technological cooperation can strengthen between both these countries, DRDO. Defense Research and Development Organization of India. Then the procurement of Rafale jets as part of India's air power is a testament to India-France defense cooperation. So this is basically there. When I talk about space, ISRO and the French Space Agency, Centre National de Etudes Specialis, it is called as CNES. They have collaborated for multiple projects in the past. France remains a major supplier of components and equipments for the Indian space program. Now these components and equipments we want to make in India, we want to manufacture in India, we want to promote the space economy in India. So France is also helping us in that. So this is there. Then the civil nuclear cooperation. Civil nuclear means when we are using nuclear technology for civilian purposes like electricity generation and all. So we talked about the Jatapur nuclear power plant. This is an upcoming nuclear power plant in the country, which is going to be the world's largest nuclear power plant. It is coming up in Maharashtra. So France is basically building that. And, you know, the progress here has been slow. No doubt about the fact. But though the first pact was agreed in 2008, the two sides have also agreed to establish a partnership on small modular reactors and advanced modular reactors. Small modular reactors are basically having capacity to generate 300 megawatts of power. This, these small modular reactors are basically a conceptual technology right now. They are not in practice. But yes, we, we want to adopt this because hazards related to the nuclear power plants are less, very less in small modular reactors. Small modular reactors can be built in the factories and directly go and get installed over there but the big or the large nuclear reactors they are built on site only that is major challenge which takes a lot of time for them to get built so 
this small modular reactors can be a revolutionizing invention in the civil nuclear setup and for that india and france are collaborating with each other the the economic partnership between both these countries the france when i talk about fdi foreign direct investment in india by france so it remains one of the largest investors in india the fdi inflow from france was around 659 million dollars for you know financial year 22 23 and a cumulative fdi basically from 2000 till now was around 10.76 billion dollars from france in india there are certain indian companies like 70 indian companies who are working in france and employing over 8000 people in france when i talk about the trade we have a trade surplus with france means we export more to for financial year 23 24 till august 2023 we have the data indian exports to france totaled around 3.06 billion dollars and imports from france totaled 2.36 billion dollars so the trade between india and france is somewhere around 5 to 5.5 billion dollars with india having a trade surplus and immense potential to increase the trade over here france being a developed country has more potential to import products and you know our products should be of that quality which gets exported over there india's main exports include engineering goods petroleum products petroleum products means refined petroleum products pharmaceutical products electronic equipments ready made garments the main imports from france are aviation products machine equipment electrical equipment and chemical products so these are basically the then digital partnership so you might have all seen you know modi ji and emmanuel macron drinking tea in jaipur and then modi ji paying the bill by upi and a statement coming from uh, the french president that the tea was memorable because we you know after drinking the tea tea which was very tasty and the payment was done by upi so in july 2023 upi was launched from eiffel tower when the prime minister visited for the bastille day parade now what what does it signify that the indians who are visiting over there because a lot of indians do visit as tourists over there and you know they can use upi to settle the payments over there then cdac and messes atos these two companies european multinational company it service and consulting company based in france have developed 14 supercomputers for india so far the fastest supercomputer named as param siddhi for india that is 4.6 petaflops per second has also been developed by the collaboration of cdac and messes atos so this is basically a very very crucial component of our partnership with france when i talk about tourism around 2.5 lakh french tourists traveled to india in 2019 where about 7 lakh indians went to france so india's population obviously is more to more indians you will see over there Rajasthan continues to lead among all Indian destinations for French tourists. Foreign tourists arrival to Rajasthan are increasing at a very rapid pace. Double digit rate of growth is there. Then when I talk about education though you might have heard the French president currently talking about that there should be 30000 students at least coming to France from India by 2030. So it is presently estimated that 10000 Indian students are there in France. An agreement of mutual recognition was signed of degrees was signed in 2018 that degrees of both the countries will be mutually recognized in each other's countries that is something which is good the indo french campus for health was also launched in june 2022 now a scheme that allows indian students to stay in france up to 2 years after finishing their masters degree to look for jobs it was renewed in october 2022 means once you complete your masters degree from france you can stay there for 2 years in search of jobs there will be no visa restrictions on your stay in july 2023 when the prime minister was visiting over there it was agreed to increase number of indian students in france to 30000 by 2030 during modi's visit france announced the issuing of a 5 year schengen visa to indian alumni who have completed at least one semester of their masters degree in france a first for alumni for from any country when i talk about community in france the indian community in france india has the strongest or the largest diaspora in the world so france also 
there is Indian diaspora. So mainland France has an estimated 1,19,000 Indian community, including in NRIs. Largely originating from erstwhile French colonies of Puducherry, Karaikal, Nyanam, Mahe and Chandranagar and the states of Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Punjab. So people from all these areas are there in France living over there. Now France has always supported India on its, I would say, international or multilateral pursuits. Whether it be United Nations Security Council or whether it be the reforms in the United Nations. India has been, you know, claiming this since long and France has always stood by us. France even went to that extent to say that, you know, India should become a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council with veto powers given to India. Whereas USA and UK have said that India should become a permanent member without having access to veto powers. So the support of France has been up to that extent. Not only in United Nations Security Council or in United Nations in general. But yes, there are multiple, you know, agreements for civil nuclear fuel supply, like the missile technology control regime, Vatsinar arrangement, Australia group or the nuclear suppliers group, where India is not a member. So France has advocated India's membership into these kind of groupings as well, which regulate the, you know, uh, supply of nuclear fuels to be used for civilian purposes. India and France have resolved to work together for adoption of CCIT, Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism in the United Nations. Now, this is a comprehensive convention which India tabled in the United Nations in 1996. But it has not been adopted right now or till now because there is no universal consensus on the definition of terrorism. But France supports India's you know, bid over here when it comes to CCIT as well. So this is all about France and India partnership, which is very important. It becomes important for next year mains as well as prelims. Next is ICJ ruling on genocide by Israel. Now we already covered this when we saw that South Africa has dragged Israel to the International Court of Justice. Issue genocide. Now, what has ICJ ruled? We need to understand this. So on January 26, ICJ gave this ruling and, you know, uh, it said that, you know, ceasefire we did not talk about. It stopped short of ordering a ceasefire. But it said that we should be taking all measures within its power. Means Israel must take all measures within its powers to stop or to prevent any genocidal acts. It also did not rule on the case, on the core of the case basically brought by South Africa, whether Israel is committing genocide in Gaza or not. It did not rule on this. But it said that Israel should take all measures within its power to prevent genocidal acts. It is what it said, but it did not testify that genocides are being committed or not, not this. Ceasefire was also not implemented by this, the rulings. So it was like this. But certain measures which Israel has to implement in the region, they were ruled out by this court and a timeline of one month has been given to Israel to implement those measures, which has been ruled out by International Court of Justice. So six provisional measures which has to be taken by Israel. A 15-2 majority of the court said that Israel must take all steps in its power to prevent the commission of all acts under Article 2 of the United Nations 1948 Genocide Convention. Now we saw that day that what genocide means according to this convention, acts committed with the intent to destroy wholly or partly a national, ethnic, racial or religious group. So this is what genocide means. So all acts should be taken by Israel to commit to, to prevent any genocidal acts. This is what the ruling was. The World Court also said that Israel must prevent its military from committing any genocidal acts with immediate effect. 16 out of 17 judges ruled that Israel must take all steps in its power to prevent and punish the direct and public incitement to commit genocide in relation to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. So the crux here, what we are seeing till now is 
Israel is committing genocide or not, this was not talked about the ICJ. But Israel should prevent any genocidal acts. This is what the ICJ is stating and saying. We have to understand it in this way. The court also directed Israel to provide humanitarian assistance and other basic services to the Palestinians in Gaza, like electricity supply was cut off, supplies were, you know, food supplies and all, they were impacted. So all these supplies should be provided. They should not be blocked. The World Court entrusted Israel with the task of preserving evidence in Gaza related to alleged acts under Article 2 and 3 of the Genocide Convention. So if any evidence is there, that should, be, that should not be destroyed, that should be preserved. This is also what the court has ordered. So maybe that is why the court has not till now stated that genocide was being committed or not because there was lack of evidence or lack of ample evidence. And now the court has said, Ki bhai, you know, you should be preserving evidence. You should not go for destroying the evidence. Then by 15 to majority, the court also asked Israel to submit its report to the ICJ on measures taken to implement the ruling within one month. So what measures Israel has taken on that Israel has to submit a report to the International Court of Justice so that, you know, an assessment is done on the rulings of International Court of Justice. Now, there are possibilities in the times to come where, you know, if ICJ finds the ample evidence that genocide is being committed, then it can, you know, again constitute a bench and constitute or again constitute a hearing we can say and you know uh, pass a judgment which will proclaim that Israel is committing genocide and then there will be other consequences. So this is like this. So till now the ICJ has taken this stand. We should understand it in this way. So with this we have completed today's session. We will be meeting tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces. Till then, you guys very well know what to do. I'm not saying it today. I will be meeting you tomorrow now. Namaste. Jai.